Welcome along to the Invincible Podcast, brought to you today by AFTV Pick 10. Being up, my man, uh, Lee Judges, we're not, maybe we're not as sprightly and bubbly as usual. That's because um, it's been not great this week, has it? I mean, first of all, there was the weekend mm. gone, um, you know, didn't get over the line against Brentford. And then, of course, Wednesday night, defeat at home, our first defeat at home, but to the champions... Um, at the moment, Manchester City, and it put a severe dent in our title hopes. Um, we're no longer top of the league. No. Uh, Man City now top of the league on goal difference and a real setback for Arsenal. How bad a setback that will be, we'll only find out between now and the end of the season. Mm. But it, do, it did feel like a momentum shift oh, yeah. to Manchester City. Um, what league? What, what, you know, football, what did you make of the game? Football, like, you know, as uh, shows you when you've got a lead, it can be taken away so quickly. And, and it's, that's what's happened, and, like, you know. We were eight points clear uh, yeah. um, about a month ago. Yeah. Eight points clear. And we were playing really well. Mm. We had those great victories against uh, Tottenham, against Manchester Man United. United. You know, pl beat, played Newcastle as well, drew with them, but real tough games. But then ever since then, you know, it's the hope that kills you. We had that defeat at City in, in the FA Cup and we still played well. But then the one was the bad one, Everton. It's a bit like last year when we lost to Everton. We lost to Everton and then that started a little slide. Mm. You know, the Brentford game, all right, we know following the game that we shouldn't have lost it, but shouldn't have drew it, should I say. It felt like a loss, but we drew that game. And then Manchester City put in three past us again. We just can't seem to beat this team. Nah. No. And um, and we had chances, and I think it was very self-inflicted. Yeah, yesterday it was. I think that um, all all different sort of defeats, or you know, I know we didn't lose to Brentford, but different in so many ways. The, the worrying thing for me now is so many players have gone off form. So mm. many, you know, you look at it um, when we was on that run, and even the man you go back to the Man United game. You know, we was looking at you picking like five, six man matches. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it was though, weren't mm. we? Like, you know what I mean? Now we can't even pick two, <coughs> that play, two are playing well, let alone man the match. You know what I mean? Like, it, uh, it's just, I never see this happening, Robbie. I never see this happening. I, the, the performances dr dropping and all that, like, you know. And, and I, I, I go back now to the Everton game. It, it, it's it, whatever happened that day and whatever have, has gone on. Um, we've lost confidence from there. Uh, players' forms have dropped. I, was, I see yesterday, like you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not criticising him. I'm, I'm not criticising any of the players because I think they've been fantastic for us. But Granite Shaka is a machine. But it's, what, ten minutes from the end, there I see him on his haunches. He was tired. He looked jaded. He looked gone. Had to come off. He came off the, the game before. That wasn't through physicality. But I think yesterday it was. I thought he was gone, mm. gone. Um, certain other players as well. Decisions by the manager, I'm not happy with. What decisions? Oh, well, like, well, you know, we all get to the day. Our best defender this season has been Ben White. Left him out. Uh, yeah, you know, and quite rightly, people have said, well, he's had a bad game, a couple of bad games. Yes. Yeah. So has Shinchenko. So has Shaka. So has Eddie. So has Martinelli. I think I think as well So Saliba I think as well the reason why he left him out is that he wanted a bit more extra physicality in there um, to deal with Haaland that, that, that's my view on it it didn't work out as a matter of fact the guy that he brought in in Tommy Asu who again a nightmare. <clears throat> again who's been a great player for us yeah. reliable reliable player had a poor game you know what I mean he gave away you what know made, made that error Sure yeah, made the error for the first goal, yeah. um, which was very uncharacteristic. I've never seen him do something like that. No, yeah, you know what I mean. And it's very uncharacteristic because normally he's your no nonsense guy. Yeah, right. But for some reason, you know, I felt throughout the game as well. Arsenal, we tried to. It's admirable the way we tried to play, and we've been trying to. We've been. That's how we play all season, which is basically it's kind of a risk and reward. You know, you play the ball out from the back. You trust your defenders, you trust your midfielders, you draw the team onto you and then you get the ball into 
the forward players who can do damage. But I just felt that in the second half, not so much the first half, but in the fe- second half, we kept making error after error mm. after error playing that way. And I kept thinking to myself, come on, we're going to get punished in yeah. a bit. It was happening. Is, it was coming. Somebody needs to switch it up. So a what bit. do you need to do? Somebody needs to get hold of the ball and go long a or, couple or of times. Change or change your tactics. Cut the diagonals out and just like you know, get the ball up the yeah. top of the pitch. But we just kept persisting with that all the time. We got away with it when when um you know the, remember when penalty Gabriel versus, the penalty oh. we got away with that because it was offside. So we were lucky in that aspect, and that's the big warning. Yeah, there was your. And warning. then we're still doing the same, same, same thing. Poor you know, game and, and then you know we get we get punished because you know the the thing is the team that we're playing against in Manchester City with the quality that they have they punish them errors. We've could, but Gabriel might have made that error. Sorry, um, Tommy Asu made made that error against another team, and uh, they away. wouldn't have someone with the ability of De Bruyne to score from, to, yeah, from the, maybe to score that finish. You know, um, we might have made a couple of those little errors for the second and third goal and maybe not got punished by lesser teams. But when you're coming up against Manchester City, you cannot give them goals. No. I felt yesterday, all three goals were handed to Manchester City on a plate. They, they, they were errors where we just, you know, don't get me wrong, they finished them off well. Mm. And, and you expect them to, because they've got the quality to do so. But I just felt that, you know, we handed it to him on a plate. And then the other thing that was really frustrating for me is that it just seems like every time we get to these really big yeah. crunch games, we never ever have, there's always someone missing, man. We get the news yesterday, we're all looking forward to the game, building buzzing up to the it, game. We? We're all buzzing yeah, for it. building up to the game, we're doing previews, Rodri or Thomas Partey and all this sort of stuff. You know, Partey's been the guy, he's been the glue in that midfield, he's been excellent this season, he's out, you know? We haven't had a game to for an injury to occur or anything like that, he's out. And you just think to yourself, again, a big game. He's, he, he was missing against Man United, we lost. He came off against um, Man City, remember half time he had that little yeah. sort of, uh, you know, he's nil nil at that time, we lose that game. Against Everton, he came off, didn't he? Yeah. We lost that. And then not there last night, although I thought Jorginho, to, to his credit, yeah. I thought he played well, no, no, no thing on him. But again, Partey's missing again. And no Partey, no, Partey. no Jesus, <laughs> we, 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 uh, you know, he's been out since like the World Cup now. That's a long time to be missing your best player. No Smith Rowe on the bench, you know what I mean? It's just like, you're looking on it and like, what is it with this club? And in, I know every club gets injuries. Yeah, but not in but training. But it's just sometimes some of these big players that are just missing. And um, well, why is yeah, in training? you know, City what are they playing rugby in training or something. <laughs> like, like, getting these injuries. City deserved it. They were oh, the, yeah, they yeah. were the, they were the better team, and we were just made too many unforced errors in that second half. And I think we gifted the game. Yeah, you could, you, you look at it. Uh, I look at it yesterday, and a little bit like a game of tennis when you've got two. Two good players playing tennis, not really much, in, and it's the one that makes the unforced errors wins the game. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you think like, uh, and it was just not one, but it was all of him. So, so, so many all over the pot. And I think at the end of the day, you have to look at the the coach. You have to look at Arteta for the first time. People are afraid to criticise him. Oh, negative and all that. When you get things wrong, game management in that game was poor was poor look at what Pep done like they weren't doing something they changed it and you know when are we going to do something we'll change it tactically change something that that's completely changes the game you have to look at it and go that's that's what a master class thing tactician does it ain't working you, you, things are not going right Pep yesterday went longer for the first time all season why because he knows Arsenal are a good side why couldn't we just go a little bit longer they have four players trying to press our defence just go over the top of them and all that, like you know. Unfortunately, we haven't got a Haaland at the front. Mm. Unfortunately, when we play Everton, we ain't got a Calvin Lewin to do that. We've got to look to get something like that in this at this moment in time. Didn't m- manage the game properly. The mistakes when you get a what like I, I, honestly, when that penalty come right, we were sitting to, like with my mates and that turn around and said it's been coming. We 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 knew it was coming. 
right? And then you get the bit of luck when it comes up the VAR, like, you mm. know, when all the fans are singing Draw the Lines, you know what I mean? Like, that was funny. It was, it was funny. I looked at my phone and, 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 and <coughs> that game's definitely offside, it's, you know what I mean? So it's offside. Right, learn from then on, right? And it's, the manager must come out and say, right, stop doing that now. Stop playing that football. Let's go long for five minutes. Let's go, oh, just try and beat the press a little bit. Try something a little bit different. The ball goes up. We haven't got, a, you know, Eddie that can hold the ball up. So it's difficult. I get it's a little bit more difficult, like, you know. But what the risk for reward yesterday was too much. Mm. It was too much, you know what I mean? Especially when they got... I know we give away the ball for their second goal. But look how they got into the position. Two minutes before that, Granite Shack has done in the same sort of position. He overcooks it. Mm. they done it exactly right. Got in... Um, Greedish on the side, he puts it, you know, on target. Whether you think Ramsey can say uh, Ramsdale can save it or not, I don't know. It was a little deflection, but when we got into those positions, Shinchenko hit, hit the clock end. You know, hit the clock and the clock end. You know what I mean? We we wasn't, we haven't got that little bit of calm, little bit of class that they have. Mm. It was noticed there, like you know, Harland yesterday was the. You know, he hasn't scored at any any at the top six away from mm. home like you know what I mean but here he comes he, you know what I mean you know it's going to happen I just think defensive I know a lot of people say about Eddie and I get get it get it. he didn't take his shot I'm going to say this about Eddie now I don't know if Jesus would have got those headed those goals let's be honest I don't, I'm not so sure but what Jesus does he does other things in the game Eddie doesn't do that Eddie's a goal scorer so when you're a goal scorer and you get those chances you have to take yeah, them. Yeah, listen, in. listen, Eddie and Ketty, and we saw we saw on the um All or Nothing where they'll sort of have them in the next day and they're watching the video. Yeah. Remember that you know, that coach would be in that little room that yeah, sort of, yeah, yeah. That sort of cinema room now. It will have Eddie in there today, I'm sure. And Eddie will be looking like this. Yeah. At, through his because honestly, like the first header You've got to say, that's yeah. an easy header for a striker. I'm sorry, and the second one, and he seemed to like he's trying to direct it like that. I'm just like, just the ball's coming. It's Get such it a brilliant cross by Zinchenko. Yeah. All you got to do is just bang, header that keeps got no chance. We'd have been one nil up. Yeah. They went down the other end and scored after that. And then this, the 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 second one in the second half again. That's another easy header. It was whipped into him again. He had a poor game, you know. Um, the work rate and everything's there, but he just, you know, we've got to put those big chances away. Um, and you do look on it and say to yourself, next season, right, um, still, for me, still a really clinical striker could be needed. I'm not saying well, to get rid, I think Eddie is, I think Eddie, when you think about it, Eddie's done his job as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he's been Eddie's, Eddie's sort of the backup striker. He's come in and he's done a job. He's not going to be able to do it week in, week out as a backup striker. Nah. But he's done his job. When you when you look at his stats, they've been excellent. But I still feel that we need an out-and-out striker that can bring a bit more. When I look at some of the top teams around Europe, you know I mean? We're in Napoli with Aussie men and, you know, you've got, you know, obviously... Tottenham have got Kane and you've got to have these strikers that are going to be a bit more cl you know Haaland last night like you said yeah. more clinical you know and the other interesting thing I found about the game yesterday is that the stats on possession Arsenal had 64% of the possession Man City only 36% you never see teams have more possession than them we had 10 shots they had 9 but here's the thing we only had 1 on target they had six on target. <clears throat> we had chances. As I said, Eddie and Ketcher had three chances. I think Tommy Asu had a chance in the mm. first half. Should have done better oh, from. Oh, we won over the You know ball, what I mean? Yeah. The Granite Xhaka one, yeah. not strictly a chance by me. He just needed to just, like you say, put it out. We had chances in the game. But the possession stats, you know, I think that's the first time since Pep Guardiola's taken over that they've had less possession or they've had that small amount of possession in any Premier League games yeah. and that just goes to show you that we, we, we you know yeah lots of possession but we didn't do enough with it and I'm worried that we keep getting done now with the long ball it's like teams are looking on it and saying right let's go long yeah and we can you know get our sort of big striker up there and you know isolate it up here because we 
we do tend to throw a lot of our sort of defenders forward. So you can get a one-on-one -on -one situation with a Gabriel or a one-on-one -on -one with Saliba. Saliba. It happened against Brentford as well. Yeah. A lot, you know what I mean? Or it was two on two because we've got so many players going forward. And I think this is something Mikel Arteta is going to have to look at. He's yeah. going to have to address now because this is definitely a tactic that has been, Everton used it, Brentford used it, and Manchester City yeah. used yeah. it. We all kept saying to ourselves, ah, it's going to be a lot different in this game because, you know, they'll play out from the back all the time. They, they, they didn't. No, it's the first time that they've actually used Haaland the way that he probably likes, he likes to be used as well, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, other games, he's hardly in the game, isn't he? But they, they brought him into it and, you, you know, you look at that 36%, they've scored three goals. I, I, I reckon Brent, Brentford had the same, scored a goal. Manchester United probably had about 36, 37%, two goals. Liverpool, too many goals can see, to opened up too much. And that's something that he's not sorted out since day one. Leicester come here and scored a couple of goals, you know. Two teams, I said it, I keep saying it, Forrest and Newcastle, the only two teams to have not have come away without scoring a goal here. We're too easy. We're too... What's the word I'm saying? Yeah, look, 69% possession against Brentford as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, and, and, and we, 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 we... So there's two things there, aren't there? 69%... And we're only scoring one mm. goal a game. Although we had 23 shots in that game, and again, How many on only one it? seven, but only only one goal. Yeah, so the percent, you know, we're not lethal enough. We, we're not. We. I look at that Eddie chance yesterday. Done very well to score that goal against Brentford. Uh, sorry, Manchester United when he mm. come on the back post. He's got it in his locker to score a goal. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. You know, you've got to get that on target because if you get it on target, anything can happen. Like you know, as as we see with the Grealish one. But once you do it, you know, it deflates the, the, the team a little bit, like, you know. But I will say that it was the big, biggest positive for me was when we went 1-0 down, the response. We played really well up until half-time. Really, mm. really well. I was really impressed I think with we us. were the better team Yeah, the first I was really, half. really impressed with us. But I, I, I think now um, it's come back to bite us a little bit, the squad so, side of it, like, you know. Who comes in for Granite Xhaka now? You know, well, you know what? Hold that thought because we're going to discuss that in a minute. What I want to do now is just get into our, our pick. Let's just do our pick tens oh, and have a look like, at you're that. You're happy about that. Anyway. <laughs> like, uh, Robbie won some money, everybody. Like, I like. won a tenner last week. I won a tenner last week, and I'm still happy about that because at least something came out good yeah. out of last week. <clears throat> so remember, AFTV pick ten. You can enter. Um, the prize pot this weekend is ten thousand pounds for the pick ten. And also for the, they're doing a Aston special, special yeah. Aston, Vicious, Aston Villa special, you can win on that one, 1,500, 1,500 pounds. How much let's, possession let's... will we have? <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you're doing it, possession oh, stuff? Like, better than the corners. <laughs> I have a 60% um, and, and only one shot target. <laughs> All right, let's look at that Aston Villa um, game, the, the full-time result. I, I think we'll lose. Fucking hell. I know I do. I do you know what I mean? I, no Thomas Parker. I, I, I honestly think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go... Where's this guy? He, he had the start of the show. He's talking about, you know, pessimistic fans and all that. You're one of them. Uh, when it comes to this guy, I, ju I just feel... One, one thing that worries me, I looked at that team yesterday and looked very, very jaded. And the, the, the thing is, I'll tell you what, but... You know, like, I won't be on the old starting 11, but it's going to be a fascinating thing, that is, because of what that team... Yeah. It, 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 you know, like, all the ones we've been on, is same 11, same 11. But these ones now are real... This is the nitty-gritty. This game now is all on Mikel Arteta, like, the, the team right. that he picks and all that, like... But I, I'm going to stick my neck out. Come on, you Gunners. But, like, I... I uh, well, uh, listen, um, this is my choice. I'm going for an Arsenal win. I'm not following him, right? Um, both teams to score, I'm going yes because we've been conceding. So that's a definite yes. Oh, I'm going for 1 0 with the Arsenal. Over 2.5 goals, I'm going for yes. Uh, first half result, I'm going for Arsenal winning. I think we'll get in front. Villa 3.5 corners. They're the difficult ones, aren't they? No. Um, Arsenal 5.5. We don't seem to get loads and loads of corners. I'm don't going do, no. Don't do nothing with them anyway. Villa over 2.5 cards. No, that's a lot of cards. Arsenal to get over 1.5 cards. No, we haven't been getting that many yellow no. cards. And Gabriel Martinelli to score at any time. 
He needs a goal bad. I'm going to go no because I, I'm not sure he will start. So that's going to be my my entry for um, that this week. Um, yeah. So that's my pick 10. Remember, AFTV pick 10. Um, scan the QR code on the screen or download the app. Get involved in it right now. I won a tenner last week. I'm on, I'm on the up. You only get six right, didn't you? I got six right, six out of ten, and it was quite a difficult week. Yeah, well, like for you to get a tenner with six, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, I know <laughs> yeah, no, but that shows you. That yeah, it just shows you. Like, I got four. <coughs> but, yeah, man, this week, Aston Villa away. You think we're going to lose? Talk me what's going on. No, Talk I don't know I'm going to lose. I'm worried. That's what you said. I, 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 wouldn't, I, say, I would not be surprised if we lose this game. I think Arsenal, if we're going to have any aspirations of getting to the, to the title we need to win this game but also I'm getting a little bit worried about where we're going to end up in this league you know what I mean because after this we've got uh, Leicester which is a tough game uh, and then we, we've we've got a run of games now which if you was on a run you'd expect us to win well listen next five games for Arsenal yeah. Aston Villa away Leicester Leicester away Everton at home Bournemouth at home Fulham away, away. That's a chance to get, at if, home if, we, that. if we can get our so, form back. Yeah, we should be all right. And, that, and that's why this game's very, very this important. This game this week, I, I know I know it's a major setback. Yeah, it's a major, major setback losing that game. Mm. We're no longer top of the league, right? But now I wanna now I wanna go on positives, right? It's a long season. The season when Leicester won the league, they lost home and away to us. Remember that? Yeah. They lost home and away to us. They had setbacks. People going, oh, don't know, man, look, see, they didn't win that. And they lost to us, everybody yeah. was saying that was it. Like, yeah, but mean. then after that, they go on a run. and they go on a little run again. This is the challenge now to Arsenal. This is a tight, we're in a title fight now. A, 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 a title charge, right? A lot of times uh, uh, this season, we've all been dreaming of staying ahead by about eight points, yeah, yeah, yeah. having that buffer and going all the way it doesn't really work like that sometimes it does but really does it work like that does it that no, you've got no, this big I, lead all, you've seen especially with Man City we've seen over the years with Liverpool when they've chased down Liverpool and vice versa when Liverpool are chasing after no them no plane sailing there's no there's not much margin for error so what Arsenal got to do now to get back on track is they've got to start winning games again they've got to get the form back make it that the last few weeks have been a blip that you can look back at the end of the season and say, oh, remember, remember February? It was all a bit, ooh, but then we come back. where it picked up again was, now this is one of those games where we can pick it up again. Here's the positives on it. We beat Villa away last season. Yep. It wasn't an easy game. It was fairly, <clears throat> was it 1-0, was it? 1-0, yeah. We had, and we, was very, we had a few injuries that day. And a bit yeah, tired. and we put in a decent performance, De didn't we? De well, defensively we did. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Different manager now, though. Aston Villa, different manager. They lost their last two games as well. Mm. Who's the manager? You know what I mean? Unai Emery's the manager. Uh, right? And have we come up against him? Uh, has Mikel come up against him? Well, he's play yeah, he played him against Villarreal. But you know, Villa are not Villarreal, mm. are they? No. Similar name, but not Villarreal, mm. right? But what I'm saying is this, yeah? Aston Villa have lost their last two games as well. Aston Villa lost last week to Man City, 3-1, pretty comprehensively. Yep. Their defence in that game looked worse all than what I saw last night. They were all over the shop. I think they've got a few injuries at the back as well. Um, I don't know what the... They're all who's back now. They're all yeah, back. but they have had a few injuries at the back because I remember even like Callum Chambers was playing yep. as centre-back and stuff like that. Previous to that, at home, they got beaten 4-2 against Leicester, Leicester as yeah. well. Leicester put four goals past them. So, it's... It's never easy to go to Villa Park because Aston Villa are a big club. Aston Villa, it'll be a packed game. Their fans, you know, get behind their team. But it's definitely a winnable game. This is a game we can win. Then after that, we've got Leicester away. Again, Leicester have hit a bit of form. They beat Tottenham the other day at home 4-1. They, they, previous to that, they put four past Villa, right? They're on a bit of a run at the moment. But we went there last year, when they and we beat. When, and, and remember, that was a decent game. Because, yeah, and we and we beat them. We put yeah. in a good performance. We beat we beat Villa, right? So that's not a game that's insurmountable, right? 
Then we got Everton at home. Our record against Everton at home is pretty good. Yeah. Right? We normally beat Everton at home. We saw Everton the other night against Liverpool. They're different when they're away from Goodison Park. You could, could see that, right? Then Bournemouth at home, who I don't think we've ever lost against Bournemouth at home. Huh. Right? I don't think we have, right? Nah. And then Fulham away, which won't be easy because Fulham are playing well. But again, it's another game. The title, they're games you've got to win. The games you've got to win. So imagine if, right, out of all those, out of those next five games, right, that's a possible of 15 points, right, if we won all those, or even if we won four and drew one of those games, mm. we're right back on track. Yeah. We've got a game in hand that will put us in a lead. I remember City, I mean, I was looking at their run, their next five, they're winnable games for them as well. Yeah. They got Forest away this weekend. You'd expect them to win that, although Forest away is never, you know, they're no, no, vociferous no. there, but you'd expect them. They got Bournemouth away. You'd expect them to win that. They got Newcastle at home. That's a toughie. They got Palace away. Palace always seem to be a bit of a bogey side. Bit of a bogey team for them. And then they got West Ham at home. You'd expect them to win that. So they've got a chance to go on on a run. But they got Champions League games coming up and stuff like that to throw in the mix. I don't think it's going to be perfect for City as well. They could fall a, a little bit as well. So we're not out of it yet. No, no. It's doom and gloom today. We're feeling miserable because we had that. We had that buffer, but you know what? This is what the buffer's been for. Yeah, yeah. That you could exactly. afford to slip up a couple of times, but you're still- In with a chance. Yeah, we're still at the top of the league. We're just missing out on goal difference at the moment. So we're that's what the buffer has allowed us. Now we've got to get back to winning ways and it can be positive if, imagine the mood change, if we go to Villa and put in an impressive that's what performance. Do. That will set a different tone as, and a different mood. Must must win that game. It's it? a must win. Yeah, it, 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 a must win. Every game is like, I'm saying this right now, for Arsenal from now till the end of the season, every game is the biggest game. Yeah. For because me, I want Arsenal to prioritise the Premier League. I know the Europa League's coming back. Yeah, get rid of it. Right. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> well, I'm not saying that. No, I am. I but am. I'm saying I want us to prioritise, right? The best players should always be saved for those Premier yes, League games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know who we're going to get. I think we'll, do, we'll find out next week, Friday, yeah. who we're going to get, right? But I want us to prioritise the Premier League, right? And I, I And it ain't over yet, but we've got to get back on a run. This is what a title race is all about. Go and speak to Liverpool fans. They'll tell you. Speak to City, even when we was chatting to Big Steve last night, you know, I'm um, City fan, you know, that's kind of what he was saying. It's a title race now, you know what I mean? It's, he goes, well, we got a lot of experience in it. That's what they've got. You know, the, uh, was it, when, it, when they won the title last year, they were faltering a bit. And then, what was it? Towards the end of the season, wasn't it? Remember, oh, I forgot what game it was. And even on the last game of the season, a game that they, they were They're losing, losing. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff, and then they came back. It's, listen, it's not straightforward. It's never straightforward. No, no, the, the, end, the end of the, the end of it, like, is a is a good point. And what we've got to do now, we've got this is our for, for Arsenal to be back in a title race and, 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 and start winning, thinking we're going to be back in it. We've got to beat Villa, beat Leicester, then that game against Everton is the game in hand. Win that, we go back top of the league. Yeah. Right, simple that, as that. that. Simple as that. That is that is the goal now. The next three games, and then hopefully maintain that top with another couple of games. So that that's what we've got to do. Whether you know, and, and I I think now we've got everybody as as as, as fans, uh, um, as players, and that is today. Wash yourself. Wash your, wash all this crap of Everton, Brentford, and uh, Man City off. Get rid of it. Get rid of that baggage now. <coughs> it starts from now. It starts that we've got no no points. It's a 17 game, is it 17 games now? Shootout, like forget what's gone on. It's from now on, on like, you know, starting from, from, from Saturday. I, I don't want to hear about, oh, well, two points here or we should have done that now. It's from Saturday now, win that game and then start a build and all. The biggest worry for me is all from Mikel's tenure, Right, there's been these performances, the the, the Evans, then backed up with three or four mm. defeats, you know, or not winning. We've done it again. 
You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, like last season, four or five fantastic games and then like, you know, lost at Southampton, Brighton, then we look, and uh, so on. Then we lost to Spurs, Newcastle. Too many of them. Get them out of their system now. Whatever you do as a manager now, make sure that that does not, it stops now. Yeah. It stops now. I don't think it was a, um, a confidence zapping performance yesterday. I felt at times we was in that game. We can look at it and go, look, you know, I, if, if Jesus was playing and Partey was playing in the game, I fancy it's against them. Their best 11 against their best 11. And we still got to go back and play them again. Yeah, like, let's you hope know? that when we go to the Etihad, right, that Haaland's injured and, and Rodri's injured and we've got our players back. And I'll tell you what, mm. let's see what we can do. Look, but, look, you know, who knows what can happen? We could go there. They've got Champions League football. They could be burnt out by the time we go there and we could be free. Who knows? What we've got to do is keep in yeah. touch with them from now on. Yeah. And we've been there before. We as fans, we've, yep. we're have we fortunate. And I, I said mm. this yesterday, and I'm going to still enjoy the roller coaster. You know, bloody hurt last night. I haven't hardly slept, you know, mm. and kept waking up and all that like, you know. But I am going to enjoy it. Do you know why? Because there's something on... Yeah, we're, Saturday. we're in a title race. We're, yeah, something in we're in a title race, and you know we going there to make up the numbers. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been in a title race for you know since 2004. You yeah. know what I mean? A proper title race, and we're in a proper title race. And just going back to Villa, just looking at their home form, um, just going from after the World Cup. So they lost three one at home to Liverpool, but then they beat Chelsea one nil. Um, I think that's their best win at home when you look at it since the World Cup. Um, they beat Leeds at home 2-1. Um, in the FA Cup, they lost at home um, to Stevenage 2-1. They drew 1-1 with Wolves and that was when Wolves were like mm. bottom of the table. Um, they, um, and then in February, um, of course, uh, they their last home game, they lost 4-2 against Leicester. So they're not in good so form, they So, they, you know, they, yeah, I, I wouldn't say they're flying at home. So what that shows you is that we've got to go there and we've got to, a bit like what Leicester did. Leicester were just, even though I think, uh, if I remember rightly, I think it was Villa who took the lead in that game. Yeah. But I it was just, early yeah, on, yeah, yeah, ninth minute. But yeah. then Leicester responded straight away and then Leicester, I think they were 3-1 up at half time. I think we've got to go into that game and we've got to play positive football. I do feel, and I don't know what you're thinking about this, Lee, I think we need to make some changes. Yes. I think the team needs a bit of refreshing. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd seriously think about um, bringing Kieran Tierney in for this game. He hasn't played for quite a few games. He'll be fresh, he'll be at it. You know what I mean? Um, I want to see some crosses being swung into that box. You know, um, I'd seriously think about starting with Trossard. You know, Trossard, I think, now deserves a start. You in know, place, um, that's the thing. I, I saw, you know, you guys have to watch Tactical Insight and you see what um, Graham and um, James were coming up with. I was, so, so I was thinking Trossard in for Martinelli, um, Eddie and Ketia and Saka. But after what they were saying, after what you were doing, I'm starting to think maybe, you know what I mean? Should we maybe put Martinelli down the middle? Yeah, that's my, my thing. Trossard on one side, Saka on the other. Ben White's got to come back in for me. Yeah. Um, you know, he looked very good when he came on. I, th I think he has had a dip in his last few games. But when he came on, he sort of, again, there was that more of that connection with Saka. And I want us to be positive and I want us to attack, but we've got to look about that long ball mm. that keeps getting, you know what I mean? I, I was, that has been worrying me, you know what I mean? We've been getting isolated at the back. And I think the Villa will do the same thing. Una Emery will see that's worked. They've got a big old Ollie Watkins up front who's brilliant at holding the ball up, right? They're gonna try and use that tactic yeah. as well. Try and get Buendia, Buendia in and around him um, and, and players like that. We've got to manage that, but Villa are beatable. Yeah, of course they are. Like, you know, I mean, like most, you know, we've, got, we've got to go, I think a little bit back to basics this game, right? Um, and start, start being a little bit more like we can beat teams, you know what I mean? We, we, it ain't long ago we was like winning, 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 like you know what I mean? So it's just got to, I think we've got to go back to basics, defend properly, and I mean defend properly. I don't want this ball bouncing and then trying to, like, that was the thing that like, defend it properly, 
Defend, defend it, high line, win your headers, and then let something go. I'll take a one nil, sloppy one nil win, but like that's what we've got to do. We've got to defend properly, get our things done, and get a chance there. I, I listen. I'm going to be really harsh. It is harsh on Eddie if you're going to leave him out. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't yes. think they will. It's four games without a goal now. Mm. Um, we, we're lacking a little. But then Martinelli's so. not no played well either, has he? Well, Martinelli, I've got a theory on that. You know what I mean? Like Gabriel just does not give him the ball early enough. I, I really or Zinchenko. Like, or, or Zinchenko. Or Zinchenko. Yeah. They don't. They when, don't. When feed you look him. on the right hand side, as soon as Ben White gets the ball, his first fault is giving it to Saka. Whenever uh, Odegaard straight to Saka, and listen, it's, it works, and he gets the, the, the play that he gets. On the other side, they look at it, they look at it, and they don't do it. And I don't understand why. Like you know, what I mean, Walker was on a booking yesterday. That was another big bugbear of mine. You know, I mean, at half time it was right. Give the ball straight to Martinelli, run at him. Run at him. him. He run didn't him. run at him. I, I didn't see him run. It once As a matter of fact, up. every time he came inside. Just get it. But because by the time he got the ball, he was spaced out. Give him it when he's got, you know, try and tease Walker into making a foul. Like, you know, we didn't do that. I thought we was going to, can I say yes? yesterday, we was naive. Mm. We was naive. We can't be naive going to Villa. We can't be naive against less. And these teams, you cannot give them um, what's the, a present gifts gifts you cannot give these same gifts give them some encouragement like go there and like they'd be looking forward to it Villa they'd be thinking oh this is you know Arsenal were you know a bit vulnerable and all that like this when you're going to go bang bang give it you know what I mean like uh, uh, what we've been doing on the road in particular we've been putting in we, these real dynamic performances haven't seen it obviously because our last game on the roads you know against Everton we didn't see that but we've got to do it this time. Yeah. We've got to get back to that. Put the City game behind us. Yeah. Put that behind us because, you know, I mean, as I said, we've built up that buffer and we've, you know, it's almost like you've uh, you played all your, you know, I mean, all, all your, uh, what, what, what was it? Like you have your reserves. You've used up all your reserves. Yeah, now. yeah, you've all that. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've... Now we've got to get back to winning yeah. ways. And build back those reserves again. And, and I'll tell you, one thing I will say was a big positive last night. The fans last night, the atmosphere in the stadium Brilliant. was fantastic. Brilliant. Considering, I think we all had a kick in the old ghoulies. You know what I mean? Like, Do you know the, you know the thing that I've, thing. the thing that I found, right? Brilliant. Big difference between this season and seasons gone by. <clears throat> when Tommy Asu made that mistake. Yeah, singing his name. They were singing his name after that yeah. to encourage him. That was a beautiful moment. I loved that. In seasons gone by, it's like yeah. gr moans and groans every time he gets the ball. So that was great. The players now, it's over to you. You're going to get great support from the fans at Villa yeah. Park. They'll come in their numbers. They will be a bit apprehensive because of the, you know, the re that's just natural because of recent results. But you can turn it right back around yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. You've got the ability to do it. It's going to be interesting. Do you think party will be back for that? No. Nah. Very interesting, all that part A stuff, though, wasn't it? Like, you know what I mean? I found out why he was late and all that, like, you know what I mean? Because they, he's got a tight hamstring. I told you yeah. yesterday, didn't I? And what they done was he had more treatment back at the, uh, uh, the training camp, and then that's when he come. That's when he come in his tracksuit and all that. So they were trying to get him ready. Then, they were maybe. trying to get him ready, and, and they they made the decision that you know he could probably play, but there was the risk that. Yeah, it, it, it would get no worse. point in risking it. I no, think I, I think Jorginho right done a. I thought Jorginho did all right, um, and I think probably it's Jorginho is going to have to um, start. Um, maybe Partey makes the bench. You never know, and 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 you know this is why we bought Jorginho in, and this yeah. is why I, I when we bought Jorginho at the, at the time, that's why I thought in the grand scheme of things it made sense because. He can come straight in. He's an experienced player. He done well, you know. Though. And, and well I thought in the game he did. He just did that. He he just came straight in. So it's not Thomas Partey. It's always going to be a bit of a drop, but at least he he did all right. You know what I mean? We couldn't fault his performance. Really, he made a lovely pass in the first half. <coughs> to Eddie, yeah, and he took too much time on it, and the, and the defender got back and all that. Yeah, you know that that's the sort of things that he can do. I I, I think he was you know like listen that was a pressure game for him. You know, but he he took the ball in dodgy areas and tricky areas and with confidence. I, I was impressed with his performance yesterday. Like you know, what I mean, he, he was mm. the one that can walk away with um, yeah, and be, say, be like, happy with his performance. Happy with his performance. 
Would uh, you bring on? Would you bring in maybe a Fabio Vieira for um for Saka? Sorry, not Saka. Not Saka. Xhaka. No, Xhaka. Sorry. No, I, I, my my team actually would be. I'd bring Tierney back in at left bank. I, I would be tempted to bring the new guy in at central defence, but I think that you know he needs. Kivio. to put, Yeah, he needs to play at some stage. Mm. You know, what I mean, I know we've got the Europa League coming up. I would probably do that at home against Bournemouth. Would probably be ideal for him, like you know what I mean. But uh, Ben White comes back in straight away, yeah. like you know. Uh, Gonna have to use the squad now. Yeah, I, I think try it for this game. Shinchenko in the middle. In, in place of Partey, okay, and, and and then I would go with uh, Martinelli in place of um, Eddie in the middle, and I would put Trossard out. So you're dropping on, um, despite you saying him had a good game, Jorginho. You're dropping him. No, Jorginho plays. Oh, so you, so I'm you, leaving out Shaka. Oh, okay, I'm leaving out Shaka. You play Zinchenko I, instead of Shaka. Yeah, in that role. I, right, I, okay. I just think we we Shaka is that he come off because he was physically gone. And, uh, you know, jaded. Yeah, I, I, you know, look, look, I'm a big fan of Xhaka as well. Like, I just, he's, he just looks like maybe he needs a little bit of a. But I don't know if he can go. If he goes, if he feels he can go again, then he goes again. Like, you know, but mm. I'm just looking at what I see after that game. I, I've not seen him look like that before. Like, you know, I, physically he was struggling. There was, I don't. Twice he took bangs. And it took him a little while to get up, and he was breathing heavily and all that. Like it's not not the Granit mm. Xhaka that I know. Like so, I was freshening up there. If um, you know um, he's fit, and uh, you know uh, then you know like Vieira maybe coming in for a regard. But you, you, you know you're making a lot a lot of things away yeah, from. Yeah, you don't, home, know, you don't like, want to you know, make too many changes. So yeah, yeah. just just one or two. Uh, I think Tierney should come back into the team. Yeah, so do I. Uh, I, I really do. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take the two cent. Even though they were poor yesterday, I thought Saliba was alright. Saliba was alright, but not not to the mm. standards that he was. No. But I, I would, I would keep with him too. Yeah, well, yeah. He's, listen, we've got to stick with it, right? Well, listen, it's a big game on Saturday, right? And we're going to be all over it here on AFTV. The watch along in the studio, full time show where you guys get a chance to have your say. Make sure you check it out. Also, we're going to be at the game. You're at the game, Lee, as well. Yeah, I'm at the game, right, yeah. so we're all at the game. Um, so we'll be speaking to fans outside Villa Park. And hopefully, we'll all have a smile on our face. Chance for Arsenal to bounce back. As a matter of fact, chance for Arsenal, as we're the first game, to actually win the game. We've been top of the league. Again. Go back top of the league and put a little bit of pressure on City. Yeah. I know they're away at Forest and people look on that but this is the Premier League and anything can happen so put a little bit of pressure back on them make them think you know they, they may be all thinking today that you know it's in the bag we've gone to the Emirates and won shift the pressure back again you know what I mean it wouldn't mean anything if they were then to lose the Forest so this is still a title race the title race is still on it's not gone yet it's no. still on but Arsenal have to bounce back Lee Thanks just, very one, much. just one question, right? Be like, you know, everybody keeps saying it's a blip. When does a blip not become a blip? If we lose on, if we lose on Saturday, it's not a blip no longer. It's a crisis. I agree. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> you can see, you know, and it, I think it's moving beyond. It. At the moment, it's still a blip, yeah. Because what is it? Um, one out of the possible nine lost to City. No shame in that. Lost, drew with Brentford, should really have won yeah. because of a, a refereeing error. So we can take something a bit out of that. The Everton thing was, that was a horrible result. New manager, you can look at, lose on Saturday, you start to say, yeah, this is more than a blip now. Yeah, we just wrong. hit, yeah. So need to win this game. Come on, you right. guys. Need to win this game. Don't forget you can do your AFTV pick 10. The link is in the description. Also scan the QR code on the screen. Um, download the app AFTV Plus and get involved right now. You can win yourself 10,000 pounds on Saturday. You know, a share of that or all of it if it falls down to you and also a share of 1,500 in the Arsenal versus Aston Villa special on Saturday listen thanks very much for watching the Invincible podcast don't forget to subscribe here to AFTV the journey continues we ain't out of the title race yet it's still on the Invincible podcast myself Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal straight talking considered discussion Brought to you by the fans of the only club 
in football league history to go invincible.